As business markets become national and international in scale, airports are increasingly being viewed as catalysts for local economic development. A great airport can fuel regional economic growth. Lakeland Linder Airport is not only home to Sun and Fun, but has some exciting business and growth opportunities for the community. All of the details are coming up on Polk Place. Hello and welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host today, Dion Spires. In studio today from Lakeland Linder Regional Airport, we have Gene Conrad. He's the director over at Lakeland Linder. How are you doing today, Gene? I'm good, sir. How are you? Thanks I'm for having great. me. Of course, anytime. Thanks for coming out. Um, so you've got a lot of great stuff coming up, as I kind of mentioned in the intro. You're working on a lot of projects. Um, but before we dive into any of that, I want to give the viewers a little bit of background on um, Lakeland Linder because I grew up in Lakeland and I don't know a lot of the history and the background on it. So for those who either aren't from Lakeland or just aren't familiar, what is Lakeland Linder Regional Airport? Sure. Well, um, you know, obviously a lot of folks uh, associate Lakeland Linder and Sun and Fun and, you know, so they know where the airport is because mo hopefully most likely they've been, they've been out to Sun and Fun. Mm -hmm. um, but the airport there has been there, it, was, it existed well before World War II. Um, it was a military base um, during World War II for bombers. I think the B-26 Marauder was there. There were some B-17s there. Um, they did some flight training there as well. Um, but, you know, after the war, obviously the city took over the facility, and uh, they've been operating it ever since. Um, you know, the, the facility, we have 1,700 acres out there. Um, we have over a million square feet of facilities that we control and operate. Uh, there are 75 businesses and organizations that are located there. Uh, with over a thousand people a day going to work in our buildings, oh my gosh. Um, so for you know my team of 15 people um, <laughs> to manage and uh, orchestrate all of that, um, it's quite the task. But I have a great group of folks that you know I, I'm, I'm I'm privileged to work with, and they do a great job. Um, but you know there's just there's a tremendous amount of activity going on out there um, right now, and the state did an economic impact study on all the airports um, in the state of Florida back in um, 2014, August of 2014. And um, they, they registered our economic impact at that time at $284 million to the region. Wow. Um, so that's quite significant. Back in 2010, they did the same study and we were about $162 million. So over the, you know, a four year period, we increased it $122 million. And a lot of that is due to the fact of all of the investment that has gone into the facility over the last five years. We talked right before we came on, um, over $70 million has been invested in the facility in the last five years. Mm. Um, so what makes up that $70 million is quite a bit of infrastructure projects as far as our runways and taxiways. Um, again, working on our million square feet of facilities out there, our, our big buildings, um, they cost a lot to maintain and operate. Um, and then we've done a, quite a few tenant improvements to bring in new tenants um, out to the airport. But also we have, you know, a, 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 it was a 5.5, now it's an 8.6 megawatt solar farm out at the airport as well. So all that investment and then our Central Florida Aerospace Academy, um, the high school for the kids out there. So mm -hmm. a lot of great stuff happening out there. Um, you know, and, and we, there are a lot of great things in our future as well, which I'm sure we'll talk about here shortly. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a list here and it seems like it, it's more than I would have definitely ever expected from you guys to be working on because you just don't really think about what's going on behind the scenes and developing. Yeah. Um, before we continue on, I want to clarify too, um, Lakeland Linder is not a, they don't do commercial flights currently, right? Um, that's well, kind of how people know about airports, yeah, I guess. Yeah, well we are, the FAA, we are categorized as a FAR Part 139 airport, so we can um, accept commercial flights at the airport, and we've been designated as a 139 airport since 1975. Um, we've had commercial service in the past. Um, unfortunately, you know, it hasn't worked out for various reasons or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but I would tell you, you know, we have done our homework. Um, I've spent personally a lot of time on looking at the numbers, studying it, trying to understand, you know, what really makes sense for us at the end of the day. Because, um, you know, I know who sits around us. We have Orlando with a <laughs> tremendous amount of activity and capacity and a lot of airlines flying in and out. Right. And also you have Tampa on the, on the, um, the west side of us. So, you know, that creates a challenge for us. Um, but when you look at the size of our MSA, basically our population here in Polk County, we're about 600 and it's either 23 or 33,000 people um, here in our MSA and it's growing every day. I mean, if you just drive down I-4, you can see everything's just moving towards us 
um, in, in, in DePoe County. Um, but some of the studies that we have done, um, we, have, we are able to, through ARC, which is airline reporting company, um, to go out and pull data and we know how many people by zip code um, that are buying airline tickets, uh, where they're flying to, um, and how much they paid. Uh, we don't know who they are, so right. we don't get that kind of data. <laughs> Actually, we don't want to know. Um, but what we found is, on average, there are 3,000 people a day flying out of Polk County, and there's wow. 3,000 people a day flying in. And that doesn't mean, obviously, they're not flying into our facility, mm -hmm. um, into Lake Linder, but they're flying out of Tampa, they're flying out of Orlando, or Sanford, you know, the other airport in Orlando, or St. Pete, um, Clearwater Airport. So we know the activities there, um, and, you know, we're only looking for a little piece of that pie. Um, so really where our focus lies today is, you know, we really need at least three or four flights a day to Atlanta or on Delta or Charlotte on American or even a, you know, a nonstop daily flight to New York because New York is our number one um, market. We have, there's over 380 people a day in our county that are going up to New York. Um, so if you say, hey, JetBlue, 150 seat airplane a day, <laughs> would it work? Um, I would tell you yes. Um, you know, when, if you look at Atlanta, for example, and when we talk to Delta, three flights a day on a 90-seat regional jet, that's 270 seats a day. Um, basically, you can get to Atlanta, you get to anywhere in the world, but you say, will it work? Yes, I'm only asking for 270 when we're doing over 3,000 people a day. Right. You know, our goal is not to have 80 flights a day. It's not to be the next Tampa in Orlando. It's just to have some piece of the pie mm -hmm. um, so we can service our, our folks that are, whether they're coming here to visit or going out on business, um, that we can service those folks and um, you know they would hopefully use us if we had that service available. Yeah, absolutely. Now with the the growth that you're talking about in Polk County, how it's just forever growing the amount of people here, it's very important that um, you guys have all this business growth happening now, which is what we're going to dive into here. Yep. Um, as I was talking about before, we have a list <laughs> of all of the yeah. things that you're doing. Um, let's start off with the Staybridge Hotel. Uh, sure. Tell me a little bit about what that is and what you guys are doing with that. Well, we, we currently have the Hilton Garden Inn out at the airport right mm -hmm. now, right. and um, they are doing very, very well. And how I know that is, um, <laughs> you know, the Hilton Garden Inn sits on, on our property, on, on airport property, and they pay us a percentage of their gross. So we get to see their sales every year, so they're doing very, very well. Um, and the new Staybridge Hotel, it's the same developer that built the Hilton Garden Inn, um, different companies. So you have the Hilton and the Staybridge is an intercontinental hotel group um, property or brand. Um, so they just actually broke ground last week oh, wow. um, and they plan to be done June of this year. And really what this means for us is, you know, we just talked about the Hilton and what we're able to generate as far as revenue. Um, those two hotels basically sitting on eight acres of property out the hotel generate over 200 grand a year in revenue to the airport which is wow. significant. Again, we're talking about the size and the scope of the, of the facility and all these things we have to maintain, and it's very expensive. I like to personally, it's a hungry beast, <laughs> and you have to feed the beast. Right. Um, you know, but, you know, there's, so we're always looking at opportunities to, to generate new revenue out at the airport, and those two hotels are, will generate a significant amount of revenue um, for our facility. Absolutely. And um, who, who are the types of guests that you guys see out there? Are they people who... Um, where does that business come from? Well, to be honest, um, when you look at the southwest sector of Lakeland, you have obviously Publix, and mm -hmm. their headquarters is right out there. Um, you have Geico, which is on the south side of the airport, and now you have obviously Amazon and County Line Road. You have O'Reilly Auto Parts. You have a number of Ruthven facilities with various businesses um, uh, located in, in their warehouses and, and office spaces. Um, so there's just there's over, there's probably 12,000 people that work out in the southwest quadrant of Lakeland around our airport. Right. So you'll see people, you'll see Geico in their, their vehicles when people come to visit them in their facilities and they're parked over at the Hilton Garden Inn. Okay. And there's a lot of you would have to expect a lot of vendors um, that are in the Hilton Garden Inn, they're going to talk to Publix across the street mm -hmm. um, to sell and pitch, you know, <laughs> their products and, and whatnot to get in their stores. So a lot of activity out there. And I would tell you that, you know, just in Polk County alone, there are not enough hotel rooms. Um, period. Um, yeah. You know, you talk to Mark Jackson or Chris, Chris Keprios and they'll tell you there are not enough hotel rooms and we're just happy that we can help with that and you know we get this one built maybe we'll have a third so maybe yeah. we've talked about that already <laughs> but you know we gotta get this one done and get it occupied and, and, and get it doing well but you know there may be a third in the future as well. Right, yeah there's definitely a benefit to having more hotel rooms in the area. Absolutely. Now I understand that you guys are working with uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection too. Tell me about that part. Yes, we are. So the original terminal building um, for 
for the for the airport uh, way back in the day um, has been repurposed a um, number of times. So the existing terminal building was built in 2001. Um, the old terminal building was used um, as the uh, old uh, or as an ARF station, a crash fire rescue station. Before we had station seven and our new fire station out there, mm -hmm. they were located out in the old terminal buildings uh, starting back in uh, 2007. Um, and they moved out when the new station was um, completed. I think it was in two 2014. Um, and now we've got this facility there, and we just built a new air traffic control tower. So we demoed the old tower, and now we've got what's remaining of the, uh, the old terminal building. Wow. And um, so we went through what's called an intermodal feasibility study uh, a couple years ago. It's basically a business plan for us. And one of the things, one of the items for us to focus on was to get customs to, to the airport. Um, so they're going to be housed in the old terminal building. So we're going to go in there, gut it, renovate it. Um, and then get it up and running and have a U.S. Customs and Border Protection agent in there or officer in there basically 40 hours a week. Um, and really what that means for us is that we're going to be able to accept general aviation flights. Um, so if there's a company out in Europe that wants to fly in here nonstop from wherever in Europe, um, we'll be able to come in here, clear customs. We can clear airplanes um, or with passengers up to 20 um, at this new facility. Um, and we, we hope to have it open uh, before Sun and Fun next year. That's still kind of up in the air, but that's, that's the goal at this point mm -hmm. um, because there are quite a few hoops that we have to jump through with the federal government to get, to get this done. Um, but we're, we're getting closer. Um, actually, the renovations are going out to bid um, next week. Oh, wow. um, you know, but we hope to get that open up. And really, you know, we can clear general aviation flights that are coming in, but we have a lot of businesses on the airport that are serving international clients as we speak today. Mm -hmm. um, you have Gulf Coast Avionics, and they're doing, they're doing um, work all around the world. You have Foster's Painting and uh, Refinishing, uh, Refurbishing out there, and they, you know, their aircraft that are coming from South America up here to get painted, um, whether to get avionics, painting, new interiors, and all that, all that gets done here. So it really up, opens us up, no pun intended, to the rest of the world. <laughs> Um, but it also helps us looking to the future and the things that you know we believe will be at the airport because where we sit geographically, um, potentially we'll be able to clear large passenger flights from South America or Europe one day. Um, but you have to have this in place to move to that next step. So that's why we're moving that direction. Definitely. Now I was recently out at Lake Linder Regional Airport for another program on the channel um, exploring y'all's aerospace program. Really cool program that I didn't know even existed until we did that show um, and I got to see the planes and everything. Tell me a little bit about the aerospace program and what you guys are offering for the students. Well really the so going back to 2009 uh, the Central Florida Aerospace Academy was created um, with in partnership with Polk County Schools and um, with um, with Rick Garcia at Gulf Coast Avionics and John Small in Polk County Schools. They started in cubicles out there in uh, 2011, they built a eight $8 million, 58,000 square foot high school. Um, that's an academy of Polk County Schools, mm -hmm. um, and you know I believe this year they started with 350 kids in that school. I believe they can take up to 500. But you know I bring that up to talk about the aerospace program because that was the catalyst for the aerospace program to be created um, with Polk State College, because uh, you have all these kids coming out of the Central Florida Aerospace Academy now. Um, that are passionate about aviation, want to get, want to have a career in aviation. But you know, what was that next step for them? Right. And you know, Polk, uh, Polk State College saw that opportunity, and they created their aerospace program and, and recruited Eric Crump to come here. Um, he's a, he's a great guy. Uh, I, to be honest, you know, I love him and he's a great guy. But we're lucky to have him, um, you know, because he's very passionate about what he does. And I saw your program with him as well. And he is he is awesome at what he does. And he's he's basically built that program from scratch and it's growing every single day and they're going to be extremely successful um, at what they do. But you know, when you look at aviation as a whole, there, there, is an air, there is a pilot shortage, there is a mechanic shortage, there is an air traffic controller shortage. I mean, just this last week the FAA came out for a week and said basically if you can breathe um, and you want to apply, please apply and be an air traffic controller because they are hurting um, that bad um, for, for, for people. Um, to come in and work with them and um, maintain our air traffic control system. So the need is real, it exists, um, and we're, we're part of that solution, but only a small part, but we're doing, we're doing our part, to be quite honest, more than any other airport in the country, um, to have the high school, to have the college, and then even you have the middle school um, down the road, down Pipkin, that has a pre-aviation academy oh, wow. as well. So you basically, uh, my friend Lights Leanhouse at Sun and Fun calls it 
um, uh, what is it, car seat to cockpit, we call it cradle to cockpit, so we have a little <laughs> battle over that, um, you know, but it, it is quite the opportunity for any kid really in Polk County um, that wants to get in aviation, now's the time. Um, something that's important, important to talk about with the Central Florida Aerospace Academy is, and their programs over there with Sun and Fun, is they provide essentially 90%, 100% scholarships to any kid in Polk County that wants to get, wants to get their private pilot's license. Wow. It's 100% paid for, and that cost is anywhere from nine to $12,000. Now, it doesn't mean if you go do this that you need to be a pilot and you're gonna have to be an airline pilot and do all that stuff, but if you're just interested in aviation, you say, hey, this is something I would like to participate in, you know, go to our website at lakelandairport.com, go to Sun and Fun's website, go to Central Florida Aerospace Academy's website, and, and, and get engaged, and what a life skill for any kid in Polk County that wants to be, you know, just to, wants to fly and get up in the air. I mean, it's, it's essentially free, whether you're a pilot or not, you know, mm -hmm. but it, what a great life skill to have that freedom of flight and to have that experience. Um, you know, and I encourage any, any, any of the young folks that are out there listening to, to get engaged and be a part of it because now's the time and you essentially can do it for free and you can't do that anywhere else in the country. Yeah. So there you go. That's crazy. That's really cool that you guys are giving them the opportunity because I feel like when I was a kid, there was nothing to my knowledge of anywhere that you can get that kind of educational background. So yep. it's really unique um, to the area here. Yep. And if your instructors for the other programs are anything like Eric Crump for Polk State, I can vouch for you on they're very passionate about what they yep. do and very experienced as yep. well. Absolutely. Uh, moving forward with what you guys are doing, um, you're doing some negotiations with uh, the NOAA, NOAA. Yep. So tell me about that. Well, NOAA, um, we found out, I guess it was, gosh, it was probably back in February of um, this year. Actually, I guess it's August now, so February of this <laughs> year. Um, you know, NOAA made the announcement that they were essentially being pushed out of MacDill Air Force Base over in Tampa. Um, and NOAA, essentially, they're the hurricane hunters, so they have nine airplanes. Um, they have uh, two P3, two P3 Orions, uh, which were big, giant four-engine airplanes um, that go into hurricanes. They have a Gulfstream, four Twin Otters, um, a King Air, and a, and a Commander. And all of those airplanes and their 110 employees um, need to relocate. Um, so we've been engaged with them back in since February of this year um, and have been in the running um, for the last several months. It's really, I guess, it basically boils down to us and Tampa St. Pete Clearwater Airport, unless there's another offer out there that we don't know about um, <laughs> that may jump in and win, you know seize the day and, and win, it out, win it over. Right. Um, but we've been working dil diligently, myself and my team, along with um, the county and the city, um, to put together a great proposal, which we had to submit back in July um, of this year. Um, they responded to some questions. We responded again, and they'll be here in September um, to talk with us. And um, there's quite a bit of work we're going to have to do to one of our facilities to get them in there mm -hmm. um, and get them operating. But if we were able to do it, it is, it is a, an incredible opportunity for the airport. It's an incredible opportunity for the county um, and the city of Lakeland to have a federal agency there. Um, and i got to tell you, when we went and visited their facility, it is quite impressive what they do there because they maintain all of their own airplanes. But also, when you look at the airplanes, they have all these different pods and bubbles and things sticking out the sides, you know, for all the sensors when they go into storms, mm -hmm. um, you know, to measure the, all these things that they measure. People much smarter <laughs> than myself, they can figure all that stuff out. Um, but they fabricate all of these things in house for themselves. Um, wow. They're very specialized in what they do, high skill, high wage individuals, very smart folks. Um, and if, you know, you know, I hope, I hope we're lucky enough to get them here. It'll be a huge deal for us, um, and we just we hope to win it and get them here and get them operating. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be pretty cool to see them flying and on, in and out of the airport, um, hopefully uh, here in the near future. Definitely. Now, you mentioned briefly um, in one of your, um, when you were speaking earlier about the solar farm. Mm -hmm. uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit and what that is? Well, you know, airports, uh, again, we have 1,700 acres, so airports have a lot of land. Um, there's a lot of land that we can't use for other purposes because, you know, we have giant runways and there's all of these protection areas and, and object-free areas and runway safety areas <laughs> and extended object-free areas and all these things we have to protect, you know, for obviously the folks that are flying in and out of the facility. Um, you know, but we, through partnership with Lakeland Electric, and also with Sun Edison, um, you know, we're fortunate enough to have 70 acres of solar on the airport. Um, so really at the end of the day, what happened was is that Lakeland Electric has a, has a, has a 
uh, what's it called, a power purchase agreement um, with Sun Edison. So Sun Edison came in, they built the solar farms on, on our property. Um, Lake and Electric has agreed to buy all the power for a set rate um, for a 25 year period. And at the end of the day, we, the airport, for being the host and them using our ground, we, we receive two cents per kilowatt hour um, that's generated off of the farms. Um, so with the three farms at two cents a kilowatt hour on average per year, we will receive about $325,000 in credits, electric, wow. you know, utility credits um, per year. So right now, at the end of the year, Lake Electric will have to write us a check because basically our entire electric bill is wiped out um, by the credits that we receive from, from the solar farm. Um, so it's an incredible partnership for us, um, being a smaller airport, not having commercial service, and again, looking for those opportunities to generate revenue. It is a huge deal for us, and also we're, we're being green, and we're being good stewards of the environment. So on any given day, like this morning, we're probably operating, um, the entire airport's operating, or at least the part that's attached to the grid where we're feeding it right now is operating off of that solar farm. Wow. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff, a unique uh, partnership. And I will tell you, we, we get quite a few calls from folks around the country asking how did we do it. Um, I was like, well, if, you're, if your city owns a utility, you, you got a good opportunity. <laughs> if, you know, every, every, every situation is different. We're just fortunate to have great partners here in the city of Lakeland and in, in, um, in Polk County. And it's, we're fortunate to, to have it. It's, it's a great thing. And all it does all day is it just does this. <laughs> and it doesn't call, it doesn't it complain, it doesn't need anything, it just, it just does what it does. So it's just pretty cool. That's amazing. Yep. And you guys have MRO, de MRO development um, yes. in the works, so tell me about that Yeah, one. so I talked about the intermodal feasibility study, our business plan earlier, and up on the north side of the airport we have about 106 acres that we're going to look to develop over, over you know, the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, but right now we're looking at about 35 acres that will be attached to the airfield with a connecting taxiway. Um, where we're going to build, you know, eventually giant hangars um, to service aircraft anywhere from like a 737 that Southwest flies up to like a 777 that you would see British Airways flying or, or United or American um, wow. overseas. Um, so, you know, with that as a component of air cargo as well, mm -hmm. um, I would tell you, you know, e-commerce is a huge thing right now and we have Amazon in this county. Um, and they, Amazon alone, has now contracted for 47 67s um, to fly, fly our stuff that we're all buying um, off of Amazon <laughs> to get it to us quicker. Um, and so in, in lieu of using f the likes of FedEx and UPS, um, they're going to move their, 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 their product themselves. Um, and I would tell you, last August, we, I was contacted by uh, one of the companies flying for them, and they wanted to bring in the 767 daily into our facility because we have an 8,500-foot runway, which can accommodate that, mm -hmm. um, and we weren't ready. Because you know you've got these wide-body airplanes, and you've got all this product in boxes or whatnot built up on what what are called cookie sheets, essentially, and they need to bring them off the airplanes, take them into a, into a building, break it down, and put it on trucks and send it. And we didn't have that building, um, but we are getting ready to get in there and start developing this area and have air cargo facilities, because naturally it makes sense for them to be flying their stuff in and out of Lakeland Linder mm -hmm. and Polk County because they have a facility in Ruskin. There's a facility in, in Lakeland, and there's a facility in Davenport, and we sit right in the middle of all of it. Right. Um, and as far as trucking it from Tampa, where the flights are going now, we're closer to all of those facilities. And I know all this because I just sent them an email about it yesterday. <laughs> um, but we're much closer, and at the end of the day, you know, it's, if they're looking at the bottom line, it'll be cheaper for them to operate in and out of Lakeland Linder than it is for them to operate in and out of Tampa on to move their product. So we're putting that business case together and we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but hey, you got, basically you got to shoot at 20 opportunities and hopefully you get one. So That's you know, right. we're, we're busy looking at a lot of different opportunities. And you know, where we sit geographically, it's just it's a natural for things to happen um, you know, as far as aviation to our facility um, because you know, everybody wants to be in Central Florida and everything's pushing towards us. So there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity. And the biggest thing that keeps me up at night is just being ready. Um, when those opportunities come, like the Amazon thing, we, you know, it should have been here already, but again, we weren't ready. But all these things take time uh, to get out of the ground and get them ready to go. But we're moving. For sure. And the last thing I want to talk about, um, Sun and Fun is huge in the area here. Yep. You guys house it every year. 
Um, can we talk briefly about the economic impact that that has on our county here? Sure. Because I'm sure it's huge. Well, to give you a little background, I, I was born in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, so Sun and Fun grew up out of Air Venture EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association, and the largest air show in the country is in Oshkosh, and that's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I came to Lakeland because Sun and Fun was here, so it was a natural fit for me because of my upbringing. My father ran that airport in Oshkosh when I was a kid. So I already knew about Lakeland. I visited here in 2003, and when the job came open, I'm like, that's, that's my, I want that job. <laughs> that's, that's where my interest lies. Um, but Sun and Fun is, you know, it's the second largest air show in the country. It is an awesome event. Um, it's run by John Leanhouse or Lights. Um, they do such a, a great job over there with, with his team and what they've been able to do over the last few years to really, you know, revamp the, the organization, revamp the event, um, and, you know, it is, we're lucky to have it. I mean, I would tell you any other airport in the country would love to have sun and fun on their airport and, and do what they do. You know, their motto is, you know, brighter future through aviation. So they're, all the monies that they're generating, they're putting back into aviation education for the youth um, with the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, all the camps they have over the summer. You know, but they have a lot of other events out there during the year, Car Carlisle car events. I know there's a big hog rally coming this year and other things because they have a large campus over there with facilities. You know, but I believe their economic impact is well over 100 million to, to the local economy wow. um, every single year. And Sun and Fun is the second largest convention in the in this. It may be the first. I mean, lights will correct me if I said it wrong. Maybe <laughs> the first or second largest convention in the state of Florida. Um, you know, during their six days in April. So we're, we're lucky to have them. I mean, they really put us on the map, literally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as that event, because it is international and is the big is the first big aviation event every year uh, to kick off the air show season. And um, you know we look for them to continue to grow, and and you know they're they're great partners with us, and we believe in their charge, um, and I, I know they believe in us as well, and, and we're great partners, and you know we want them to grow, and they want us to grow, and we'll, we'll keep doing that. Well, that's amazing to have that here in Polk County, like Absolutely. you said. Uh, you guys have a ton of amazing business um, growth happening that you just talked about, and it's clear that your investments that you were speaking of have been pretty solid investments and it looks like things are going really well for you guys. So I appreciate you coming in to talk about it and kind of let the community know what you guys are doing and what you guys are working towards. No, oh, well, I, I appreciate the opportunity again. I will tell you we're not perfect, but we try really, really hard to do the <laughs> right things. Um, and we just love what we do and, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm super passionate about what I do and I have a great team of passionate folks as well that really make it go. Everybody gets to see me, but they're the ones really doing the heavy lifting and, and making it happen every single day. So. Again, thank you for the opportunity. Anytime. Businesses located at Lakeland Linder Regional Airport really are thriving. Centrally located on the I-4 corridor between Tampa and Orlando, the Lakeland Airport is owned and operated by the City of Lakeland and is managed by the airport director who reports to the city manager. It covers 1,700 acres and 1 million square feet of facilities, has an 8,500 feet runway, and over 250 acres available for development. Lakeland Linder Airport is home to Sun and Fun Fly-In, Central Florida Aerospace Academy, and Polk State College Aerospace. Its economic impact to the region is over $284 million and has undergone over $65 million in airport improvements over the last few years. For more information about Lakeland Linder Airport, look them up on the web at www.lakelandairport.com.